Gang rape, among the most shocking of violent crimes, is spurring global outrage. Throughout Asia, researchers believe it's far more common than most people think. Our data shows that rape is a major problem in all countries across this region. Women's experiences of violence are well documented, but the motivations of men have been largely in the dark. When you speak to men and boys, they often say, well, nobody's ever asked us about this. We go in search of the reasons behind gang rape and other violent crimes against women. We are good friends, so we want to have sex together with one girl. Sometimes I rape them in the car and sometimes in the guest house. They will not report it to the police. There is a dimension where it's almost sport-like, where young men, uh, men uh, egg each other on. I'm Ella Callan. On this edition of 101 East, we speak to men in Cambodia, a country with some of the highest rates of violence against women in the Asia-Pacific. We ask men why they rape and abuse women, and if the perpetrators can trigger new ideas for prevention. Gang rape hit global headlines in December last year. The rape of a 23-year-old woman on a bus in India's capital, Delhi, shocked the world. The attack which led to the woman's death was so brutal that it prompted public outrage on a scale rarely seen over cases of violence against women. People struggled to understand why such a violent assault happened, what could possibly motivate young men to commit such a crime. Tong Soprach was left wondering too. As a journalist and campaigner for women's rights, he questions why his country, Cambodia, is not doing the same soul searching over violent crimes against women here. He publishes a weekly column in the Phnom Penh Post newspaper, which highlights cases of rape and abuse. Protests like India is a good example, like, please stop rape, stop gang rape, yeah, this is good lesson learned. Cambodia's capital, Phnom Penh, does not have the same reputation as Delhi. Rape is something rarely talked about, and women don't live in fear of being attacked. Yet below the surface lies an alarming trend. New figures suggest quiet Cambodia has more than double the rate of gang rape in India. Cambodia actually we found one of the highest rates of gang rape um, in any of the countries we studied. So 5% of men reported that they had um, participated in gang rape here in Cambodia. Um, and in other countries it was around 1-2%. to 2 Dr Emma Fulu is the leader of the largest multi-country research project on men's perpetration of rape and abuse in the world. It's also one of the most in-depth studies ever undertaken on men's own experience of violence. Four UN agencies surveyed more than 10,000 men across Asia and the Pacific. They didn't think we could ask those questions of men. You know, they thought, why would men admit to using violence? Um, why would they tell us about that? We used these little handheld computer devices and they were there to enter the data, but also one of the key things is was it meant that for the really sensitive questions, like on rape perpetration, men could answer those questions in a totally anonymous way. Across the countries surveyed in the region, one in four men admitted to raping a woman or girl. One in 25 said they've taken part in a gang rape. Cambodia was one of the countries where men reported the highest levels of rape. It was happening with very young groups of men um, in Cambodia. So, you know, we found that, for example, um, at least half of the men who had committed rape did so for the first time when they were teenagers. And actually 15% were under the age of 15 the first time they committed rape. This comes as no surprise to Tong Soprach, 
who along with his newspaper columns has been undertaking his own research into the problem for nearly 10 years. He explains gang rape can be blamed on a cultural practice among young Cambodians known as Bok, the name given to a group of men having sex with one woman. Bok is mean in my Khmer language, is Bok is mean plus. Fun with bonding, male bonding, yeah. They will say, okay, I'm strong, I'm, uh, well, I'm strong enough, I have sex longer than you, then the, this one, they argue with each other, they show off each other who has sex longer, just show off with the peer. Soprach says the problem is that most men in Cambodia don't think bulk is rape. Often one man in the group will bring a woman to a guest house where his friends then join in. Soprak gathered information from motorbike taxi drivers who talked to groups of young men involved in bulk on the streets at night. So they're mostly uh, young people, not the poor or not the high class, just the middle class and the age between 18 to 23. We wanted to speak to these men ourselves to find out more, but Soprach warned it would be difficult. He says men often hire sex workers alone, then force them into having sex with a group. For some men, the practice has become so normalised, they do the same to their girlfriends. Is it hard to find men to talk to you about bulk, about gang rape? Yeah, it's very hard to find. Um, but we have to build trust with uh, them. And, but it's difficult also with you as a woman. So. Maybe they won't admit it, yeah? Yeah, be nervous with you. With Soprak's help, a group of five men eventually agree to see us. Only three are prepared to speak on camera and they want us to disguise their identity. Like the majority of perpetrators, they've never faced any legal consequences for their actions and they also don't want their families to find out. We are good friends, so we want to do bulk, have sex together with one girl. We don't have money. The reason is we don't have money to hire sex workers on our own. They say they've been doing this together for six or seven years, since they were teenagers. It began with sex workers, but now any woman could be a target. So, we chat up a girl, any girl, maybe a girl from a shop. If she's pretty, we will try to trick her into sleeping with us. We will get her drunk. Then one of us will take her to have sex. She does not know that the rest of us will join in. Do they feel bad for any of the women? If the girl screams out, we are afraid the police will turn up to the guest house and catch us. We are afraid of that. Do they consider what they are doing is rape? It's not rape, not rape. I don't know whether it's rape or not. I'm doing it because I can't afford a girl on my own. It is not rape. This exchange is a glimpse into how powerful the pack mentality is for these young men. If it was my sister and she had sex with a lot of men, I would feel sorry. All three of them say they regret what they've done, but would do it again if their friends wanted to. If it's wrong with one's sister, why would it be right uh, with someone else's sister? Weni Kusuma from UN Women explains the actions of perpetrators are often at odds with what they see as appropriate for women in their own families. There is a dimension where it's almost sport-like, where young men, uh, men uh, egg each other on in terms of the, uh, the perpetration of violence against women. Um, and the degree to which that social dimension happens, to me, uh, is, is really a deep problem for Cambodia. She says the first step to stopping gang rape is working with men and understanding the complex reasons behind their behaviour. Men gave multiple reasons for rape in the survey, 
Sexual entitlement was the most common. But in Cambodia, anger and punishment, as well as fun and boredom, featured more prominently than in other countries. Alcohol played less of a role than many thought. And if we can understand that more clearly, then programming, both at a, a governmental level, but all the way down to the response level, can be much more in tune with addressing the source of the problem. This park in central Phnom Penh is renowned as a place where men go to meet sex workers. According to the UN research, men who pay for sex or have multiple sexual partners are far more likely to take part in gang rape. I meet Sredar, a sex worker in Phnom Penh, and ask her about her experience of bulk. It happens very often to me. Yes, more than 10 times. She says men don't tell her when they want to have sex in a group. When he comes to take me for sex, he comes alone. But when I arrive at the guest house, there are many men. I have to sleep with all of them. If I refuse, they hit me very hard. Do you fear for your life? Sometimes they threaten to kill us, they have a knife. What I mean is, they want to make us suffer. Sredar says she was once forced to have sex with 15 men and it took three months to recover from her injuries. She didn't dare go to the police, prostitution is illegal in Cambodia. And, she says, police officers have raped her too. It was last year, 2012. I didn't remember the month. The police cut my hairs when I didn't have any money to pay them. They handcuffed me in the bathroom and hit me because I didn't have $100 to pay them. They all raped me in the bathroom and then let me go. In recent years, police raids have cracked down on Phnom Penh's brothels. Some say this is preventing gang rape. Others claim the industry has been driven underground and women are now more vulnerable to attack because they work alone. But Cambodia's gang rape problem extends beyond the sex industry. Tong Soprak arranges for me to meet a man he describes as a ringleader who lures young women to go out with him so that he can then commit gang rape with his friends. Does he mind if we just have a bit of a talk? We can sit over here. The man is 31 years old and married with two daughters. He looks me in the eye while describing how he gets young women, even schoolgirls, to trust him. We flirt and build a good relationship with her first. Then sooner or later, we invite her to go out. Sometimes I rape them in the car and sometimes in the guest house. I make sure that I know the owner so that it's safe for me. They will not report it to the police. Everybody keeps their mouth shut. Does he think that that's right? Yes, I think it's for sex. That's what it is. I force her to have sex with us. If I ask them nicely and they still refuse, the only way is to force them. What about his wife? Does she know that he does this? My wife does not know. I always hide it. I ask why he's willing to admit to this and whether he's afraid of being caught. He says he's not scared and feels no guilt. At first, I feel pity for them. But if I have to spend a lot of money on a woman and then she doesn't agree to have sex, I no longer feel any pity for her. It's striking to witness the lack of empathy these men feel for their victims, but more than anything, what sticks with me is that they really don't think they're doing anything wrong. 
The justice system does catch up with some men, but there were fewer than 20 gang rape cases prosecuted in Cambodia last year. One current case reported in local papers involves the gang rape of a 14-year-old girl. We go to meet her family who live on the outskirts of Phnom Penh. Her uncle says since the rape 10 months ago, the girl has been living in a shelter where she's getting medical care and counselling. She got sick from rape. They force her and fight her. Did they hit her? They hit and rape. And how many men were there? Four, four, four gang, four boys. He says she was tricked into leaving the house with one of these men. They took turns raping her in a field for over four hours. Three of them have been convicted and sentenced to seven years in prison. A fourth man has not been found. Each have been ordered to pay compensation of two and a half thousand dollars to the victim. But the court process has taken its toll on her family. I just couldn't take it, seeing my daughter being questioned over and over again. I felt like I would have a heart attack. Every day, I don't know what to do. It's miserable. I have heard of cases like this happening to someone else. Now that it's happened to our daughter, I am shocked. The conviction is not enough to fix this broken family who feel a deep sense of shame. The mother blames herself and fears that her daughter may not be able to finish school or find a husband. I feel empty. I feel numb inside. I can't concentrate on anything. Cambodia is in urgent need of solutions to stop its gang rape problem. One man trying is O Ratanak. He was a university student when his friends asked him to take part in a gang rape. He says he was ridiculed when he refused. Today we're back at university where he runs a program to teach men to resist peer pressure to rape. When they grow up, peer influence still be very powerful with them. Ratanak holds debates in classrooms and on television. Today's topic is the role of men in promoting gender equality. Ratanak says the discussion encourages young men to develop their own opinions and challenge cultural myths about the roles of men and women. Like sometimes when they, they invite to join the gang rape to rape together, when some guy really check, not participate, they will blame that you are not the real man. You are maybe gay, you are something like this. This is the part that pushes the man. In Cambodia, like many countries, young men are under pressure to appear tough and to fit in. There's also a cultural reluctance among the older generation to talk to them about sex and healthy relationships. Social workers believe this is why more than half of men who said they raped did so for the first time as teenagers. They're actually learning about sexual relationships often through violent pornography and their experiences of violence within the home. So what they are learning, I think, and this is a big problem for, for many boys and young men, is that you can meet your needs through using violence. Alistair Hilton counsels young boys in Phnom Penh who display sexually harmful behaviour. He says the damage is often done before they're teenagers. We've actually worked with children as young as 7, 8, 10 or 12 that have been involved with sexually harmful behaviour. What we are finding is that many of them have experienced extreme physical violence in their lives, in their families and communities. Many of them are isolated and, and kind of lonely. Cambodia has hundreds of NGOs targeting women as victims of sexual crime. But Alistair says as few as four organisations work on preventing violence with boys and men. When you speak to men and boys, they often say, well, nobody's ever asked us about this. No one's ever asked us about those experiences. 
and um, they really need to talk and they want to talk. 65% of men in Cambodia said they experienced physical abuse as children. 16% were sexually abused. World experts recognise that boys exposed to physical or sexual violence are at risk of perpetrating violent crimes as men. A key thing about rape is that rape is seen as a socially learned behaviour, at least um, with respect to the fact that gender is one of, and how we relate, you know, between men and women, and what gender means in terms of power within a society. Gang rape is one of the most severe forms of violence against women, but we shouldn't forget that even according to the data from men, rape and physical violence is far more common within a marriage or partnership. Promisingly, donors and the government of Cambodia have been working to stop violence in the home. A domestic violence law was passed in 2005, and follow-up studies show it is having an impact on people's attitudes. Che Chan Thun and his wife, Van Somya, live in a tiny room along the railway track outside of Phnom Penh. They say they've had a lot of fights about money and both admit to hitting each other during heated arguments. Yeah, during the fights when I hit my wife, I didn't know what I was doing. After I hit her, I felt pity for her. Then I would try to console her. After their worst fight, Somaya was taken to a women's crisis centre, bleeding from the head and bruised. She received help and counselling. Now they both say they understand the need to stop violence, not only for their own sake, but for their children. I am worried that in the future my kids will imitate the way my husband behaved to me. That's why I tried to explain to my husband about domestic violence, because our kids will imitate us. Then he stopped this bad behaviour. We have learned that it is, it is possible yeah, uh, to see some changes. GIZ is one of the largest international donors working on violence against women with the Cambodian government. Youth outreach is a key part of their program to prevent domestic violence, which they say dropped by 15% over five years. There's now recognition of the need to work more with young men to prevent sexual violence. Interestingly, uh, it's Cambodia compared to the neighbouring Southeast Asian countries has less youth violence in general. Yeah? So, uh, violence is, is uh, quite sexualized yeah? uh, amongst youth. Uh, Cambodia also has undergone uh, 30 years of civil war that has created uh, licenses uh, for men to be violent against women. Professor Rachel Jukes agrees the country's violent history has had a role to play. She's a global expert based in South Africa who's researched rape and the reasons behind it throughout the world. I think it might be related to the uh, history of trauma um, in, in Cambodia and particularly the um, period under the Khmer Rouge. But on the other hand, I think that gang rape is very often a cultural phenomenon. And where we see it occurring, very often there are sort of almost culturally scripted situations in which gang rape will occur. The reasons behind rape in Cambodia are complex, but it's an issue that deserves the attention of communities and governments across the region and the world. And it is just ordinary, average men. They're not evil people, necessarily. Um, and a lot of the times, I don't think they're aware of their behavior being violence or abusive or the impact that it has. We shouldn't demonize men. It's not productive. We need to work together as individuals and communities and. And I think that's the way that we'll see change. Gang rape is one of the most horrific acts of violence. Understanding why it happens and how to stop it takes courage not to turn away.